live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, welcome to Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. It is Friday. I want to pull up this picture, though, because it's really nice outside, as you probably noticed, and that is a great shot of Mount Hood from our ski bowl camera. Just want to show that with those blue skies right there, but thank you for joining us, regardless of wherever you are. I'm sure you're outside streaming this show right now, or you're watching after. Either way, we appreciate it. We are live here every weekday, starting at 1 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, our website, and, of course, our apps as well. We cover a wide range of topics on this show, as you probably know if you've watched us. But today we're talking about something that's coming up next week, and that is a planet parade. Something else you can see there in the sky, potentially. And we're going to find out all about it right now, because joining us we have Jim Todd from OMZ, who is the director of space science education. And uh, Jim, always good to have you on here to talk about this. You know, I love talking about anything space related, and that is your job. So it's a kind of a good match for that. But, uh, you know, we all like finding out about these things. And I guess to to start off, can you give us just an idea of what a planet parade is? Well, this is another, it's kind of coincidence that we're having the Starlight Parade, the Rose Festival Parade. Now we have the Planet Parade. <laughs> I was going to make that same answer. joke. <laughs> you beat me to yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so it's really a, it's a good timing of all of this that we're going to have a, a, a rare event that's coming up on next week. Where we're going to have the a group of planets that will be visible in the morning sky. Now, you remember in De uh, December in 2022, we had the amazing planet parade in the evening. Now it's in the morning. So what we're talking about is we have, the, uh, we have seven planets that are technically in the morning sky before sunrise. And on Monday, it's the best bet because Mercury is the seventh planet in the group. And so Mercury will make an appearance, and then uh, we'll see, the, the, just before sunrise, we'll see the planet really close to the sun towards the east. Now, the catch is not all of these are visible to the human eye. Right? So what we're looking at is that we have uh, the usual Saturn and Mars. Those are going to be easy to find. And then way over there in the east, we see Jupiter, and Jupiter is going to be really close to the horizon, and there's Mercury. That's the catch. They're going to be lost pretty much in the, in the sun's glare. It's technically there, but it's not. But you can actually see it if you have absolute clear horizon uh, towards the east. And then we have Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Those are called the non-visible planets. They have to have a really good map and a really strong telescope to even spot them at all. Right? So, technically, we have the group of planets that are visible in the morning sky, and the moon, a waning moon, is going to be sweeping by these planets for the next few days. So it's a really beautiful event that's happening in, its, in the morning sky, but it, this is rare that it has so many planets. So where's Venus out of all of this? Well, it's behind the sun. And so... It would have been nice to have Venus in this group, but it's already heading back towards the evening sky. So Venus is bowing out of this one, but the rest of them technically are all going to be there. So uh, a couple of questions with that. You know, you mentioned, um, you know, if you have a low enough horizon, where's a good area if somebody wanted to try to see all of the planets, you know, in this, where's a good area to go? Yeah, actually uh, the beach, um, because the ocean is the true horizon. And so that would be the best bet. But the challenge there, too, again, is that when you're at the beach, if people know that in the morning sky, you could have low clouds and fog and what have you. But if the conditions are right, you have a view towards the east, um, the beach is good. But um, because beach, you look towards the west. But the beach, um, you have the view, I think, and that you have the view towards the east. That's what you want at the eastern horizon. So if you're in central Oregon, that's really an ideal spot. Uh, so ideally, they have good transparent sky. It's very clear. Uh, that's an ideal spot to be. Here, we have a little bit of a challenge in Portland in the valley. We have the Cascades. That can actually interfere with the viewing. So find a good spot, get a good, clear eastern horizon. Central Oregon would be your best bet. Um, you mentioned, you know, having a really good map. I know a lot of people have downloaded apps. I've got a star map. I think Google has a sky map along those lines. Is there any good app that will really actually help you spot some of these planets? 
You know, there's a variety of them. My favorite one it would be the Google Sky uh, Google Sky Map uh, is good, but the one that Sky View Light has a camera and it puts the map with the camera. And then when you point to that towards the east, not only will you see it, but you'll put a map there. It's a really useful device and it'll show you even if they're below the horizon. So I highly recommend that. It'll work even if it's cloudy. And, and so uh, this is a great app to have all year round, no matter where you are, and it's free. And so I highly recommend that. And then you can also, uh, there's plenty of planetarium software on the desktop uh, that you can use. Solarium is the uh, all-time favorite. It's free. You can look it up. Do your homework before you go out to know what to look for. The moon will be a good guide in a way, too, because it'll show you where the moon will be. And then when you find the moon, it'll show you what planet is going to be next to the moon that night. Uh, did you say is sky view? Is that was, was that the name of that? The sky view light. Sky view light. Sky, okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's a really good app. And it's free. It's very useful. Worked on most uh, apps and it worked on tablets. It's highly recommended. I will be grabbing that one right after this. So th thank you for that recommendation. <laughs> uh, so yeah. uh, say you know somebody can't make it out to Central Oregon or can't get to a good viewing spot. Are there opportunities through OMSI to be able to view this? Or what kind of uh, options would there be there with the planetarium? Well, with the planetarium, we have a show called Starry Night Live. And this is a show that we show daily. And, and we talk about the current events all the way from the planet to what's uh, visible uh, in the current night sky. Of course, everybody is talking about the Northern Lights. Now these days, at the solar maximum, it's a great place to come to learn about the sky, ask questions, uh, and keep up on current events. So definitely something to check out with that. Um, so you mentioned that the, the Planet Parade, you know, this is really rare. You said in, I believe, December 2022, uh, we had something along those lines. So for this one, though, appearing in the morning like this, how how rare is this? When would the next one be? Yeah, the next one, it won't be for a while. Um, and so it, this is one of those that, depending on how many planets you're talking about, okay? So we have numbers. So we have like six or seven or eight. A group can be as many as three or four. It talked about the visibility and the location. Everything matters, being at the right place at the right time. And so. Um, we have to just basically have to um, watch for like Planetarium software and look for the groups uh, gathering. And I'm sure this, uh, this is a rare event that, as it is, it's rare, that it doesn't happen very often. So it's something that's, yeah, pretty pretty unique when it comes to that. Um, I think, uh, you know, just, just looking at what's coming up here with this, so people will have an opportunity at least to see some of it over there in, in Central Oregon, maybe a lot of it. Here in Portland, are there any specific planets that we'll be able to see out of this lineup? Well, that, that one is uh, kind of tricky. Because um, yeah. uh, you have one to be at a high high angle, but we have lots of trees and lots of buildings and what have you. So if you get away from the city, let's say you go west towards uh, like White River uh, area, uh, or you go south, you know, like Champui Park. It's a, it's, a, it's a real challenge of getting a good, clear eastern horizon. I remember we were trying to uh, look for a comet uh, years ago, trying to find a good, clear eastern horizon. It can be challenging, um, but uh, some people know where to go when they find a good eastern horizon. So if you got your secret spot, your eastern horizon spot, then you're gonna be you're gonna be pretty set to to have a chance to see some of this. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Jim, anything else you think people should know just about about this coming up, about this actual event? I'm sorry, say it again. Oh, is there anything else that you think people should know just about this event? And you know, since it is so no, unique. Um, and, yeah, and, they have and to exciting. understand that uh, you know people are saying visible planets. And you have to understand that Saturn and Mars are going to be visible to the human eye. Jupiter and Mercury could be low, but that could be really challenging. But Neptune, Uranus and Pluto are really dim. How big of a telescope you need to have? Well, those kind of dim planets, you need 10 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch telescope. You may be really seeing them. A backyard telescope, you really won't be able to. But the fun thing about the app, 
is that would show you where they are technically. So in a way, you're looking at it, but you can't really see it. And so it's just fun to know that when you're out there observing. Now, a little small problem with this is that when you have the moon, the moon is producing, is reflecting the sunlight. That's going to diminish even more the viewing of uh, the fainter planet because there's a lot of light coming from the moon that's going to diminish the uh, ability to be able to see those non visible planets. Now, the planet themselves, they'll be visible pretty much all year round except for Mercury. Mercury goes around the, around the sun 88 Earth days. Venus is going to stay around either half in the evening and half in the morning. The remaining Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, all of the other planets, they're going to be in our morning sky for pretty much the rest of the summer. And then next fall, they start to make their appearance in the evening. So it doesn't mean this is just uh, only in the morning for now. They'll be visible all year round. And again, the app will be really useful to show you where they are throughout the year. And uh, last question to you, this, what day is this starting and how long does it last? Uh, it will be on Monday, the third. That's the Mercury at the catch, getting that one extra planet. And, and then on the fifth, Mercury starts to head towards the sun. And that's when we start lose that group. Okay? But the rest of the planets will be in the morning sky for pretty much the rest of the summer. Uh, in, in the morning, but Mercury and Venus are going to be making a, what I call a square dance around the sun. It starts heading out. It, Mercury is going to go with a solar conjunction. Mercury and Venus will be in the evening sky later uh, this summer, and then they'll swing back into the morning sky next fall. All right. So good to know. I mean, a lot of opportunities right there and some good advice to you on on that app to grab and just to, just what to know about this. Jim, it's always great having you on. I really appreciate you joining us um, to talk about uh, talk about all this and educate everybody, and thanks for being here. Okay, and my pleasure, thank you. All right, thanks, Jim, have a great day. And uh, for everybody watching too, this is Fox 12 Now, so thank you for joining us. I love learning about that, you know, and as I mentioned, we have a wide range of topics here on this show, so um, switching gears a bit here at 1.30 p.m., we're gonna be talking about, well, Trump's conviction. There's no easy way to ease into that. That's what we're going to be discussing. And uh, we're going to be talking about the legal uh, aspect of that as far as what comes next. This is a question that a lot of people have. We've got an expert who's going to be joining us to walk through some of the facts, what to expect, what goes on in this process. So that's coming up at 1.30. And then at 2 o'clock, we have the Fox 12 weather podcast. So broad range of topics here on the show. But uh, that's it for this segment. So we're going to regroup. I'll see you right back here at 1.30 on whatever platform you're on. Or if you're watching after the fact, that's fine too. You can certainly go find all these segments. I recommend the Fox 12 Oregon app. That's a great way to do so. So you can download that and uh, watch everything that we have here. So thanks for doing so. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now. <laughs>